be talking a bit about how we approach um, modeling movement on waterscapes, um, a bit through my lens of the Caribbean, but also just doing kind of a brief summary about uh, what challenges we've been facing in part of the field. So one of the big issues uh, that we need to start talking about is what were the mechanisms behind past island colonization efforts and inner island movement? Because um, these necessarily aren't the same thing, but they often come with similar uh, issues that we have to deal with as archaeologists looking at a modeling problem. So we can often deal with what are the basic factors we need to think about before we begin modeling, which is what can we learn from experimental voyaging, the kind of records that we can get from people who have actually been canoeing, how difficult it is it, how long does it take, combined with um, archaeological record, so materials like on the slide, which uh, is kind of grainy, but it's a piece of a canoe from the Caribbean, um, especially when we often, uh, as part of our early seafaring work, miss out on a lot of the actual seafaring toolkit due to deterioration issues. Um, but we do have archaeological material on coastlines that show interaction either in terms of movement uh, there and back between materials being exchanged between, between islands or the settling of places. And we also then have a historic record, um, which can either, an ethnographic record, which can provide us key insights into how are people approaching navigation, um, how are people actually using the seafaring toolkit, um, and applying that to different approaches in modeling as a base. Um, so there's been a lot of different practices in modeling <coughs> movement on water, mostly because unlike landscape uh, mobility studies, there hasn't been a case of best practice. Um, there's been a lot of people working at different universities, creating their own methods for modeling these issues. And we're really starting to now build up a community on how we approach these issues together, what kind of environmental factors are we looking at, how are we applying that within a model, what kind of modeling are we using, um, because there's also the issue of whether or not are people approaching it either in a least cost pathway context, so are people creating a surface either based on a s sequential environmental data um, or randomized data sets that they can collect, or are people looking at agent-based modeling where they're having agents go through and make selections based on more of an idea about context within navigation. And a lot of this can deal again with geographic differences. Um, so where we're getting our data sets can be quite spread out, um, just due to the nature of whether we're using modern data um, from different government repositories, or are we using uh, work done by other researchers in paleo environments, and trying to see what kind of resolutions we can get with that as well. Um, so the focus, again, is key to focus on the model voyages, right? For um, a lot of different examples have been done. Um, I just want to kind of show you the breadth in terms of people who have approached either um, isochrome-based examples, where you can look at the movement of people moving in time, and this uh, can be used also in least cost pathway analysis. And then you have people who are looking at modeling directed pathways which you can kind of give a clear line about how are people moving past coastlines, how are we interacting and engaging with different access of trade and interaction with known archaeological sites. Um, and around just a global sphere, so we have examples from the Caribbean, the Aegean, um, Mediterranean, and the Pacific, and even off the coast of the United Kingdom. So my work basically focused on taking the idea of isochrome modeling, so how far can people move in a specific period of time, and then combining that together uh, so that they're always heading towards uh, a direct site, because I was really interested in looking at connections between known sites in the Caribbean. So this is movement around the island of Puerto Rico. Um, where we have no connection between materials on Kelby's Ridge and in the edge of the Dominican Republic. So it was really important to take the context of uh, generating an underlying surface based on sequential or um, in order environmental data, so it moves by hour by hour from modern material gathered, and then create a surface on that uh, where people are following step by step navigation practices. And what was really interesting about this is um, we found that although there are a lot of uh, instances of ordered voyages, 
or they would follow the uh, most logical path in terms of a short route, even with least cost pathway analysis, which does in some sense look at the optimal voyaging. When they face unoptimal currents, you can find connections between um, short hop routes that get extended and actually make contact with materials exchange evidence in archaeological site records that before didn't have context for why people on this island were more connected up here than to this island. So uh, yeah, that was briefly my research, a brief frame sea frame. Please ask me questions in the panel because it was hard to fit all of this into five minutes. <laughs>